is uh, that you're watching this now. We pray that the Lord may speak and that his word may uh, assure us that under these difficult and uh, challenging times, uh, we may be reminded of um, the potency and power of his word and the, and the power of his promises. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, the As We Gather portion of our bulletin. I'll read this with you. Long before Jesus' death and resurrection, God made clear to his people that death would not have the last word. As Ezekiel was inspired to write, uh, write of the dry bones of death having life breathed into them, it would foreshadow the future of God's people through the one who conquered death and the grave once for all. In a world of death and decay, we are sustained in our journey now until the resurrection of all flesh through Jesus Christ our living, our life-giving Lord, and our life-giving Savior. Uh, join me as we sing our opening hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living. Jesus Christ, the life of all the living, who is the resurrection and the life, life sanctified by the living breath of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of Sheol lay hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. We come before our Lord, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. Apostle Paul has called us to live life through the Spirit, not according to the flesh. 
Together we confess we have not put to death the things of the flesh and have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone and by and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple when I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to you, your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord will open the graves and put his spirit within his people, and they shall live. God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and through his death brought life and immortality to light. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, not my authority, but by Christ's authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak the psalm appointed for this Sunday, Psalm 100. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for help. Lord, you, if you kept an account of iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. I wait and I put my hope in his word. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen. Wait for the morning more than watchmen for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For there is faithful love with the Lord, and with him is redemption in abundance. And he will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. sin, eternal death, and the power of the devil. Breathe into our bones and our souls your life-giving word that we rejoice in your forgiveness and serve you and others in love and faithfulness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our next reading from the scriptures comes to us from the prophet Ezekiel chapter 37 from the valley of dry bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, Prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you and you will live. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And while I was prophesying, prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. As I looked, tendons appeared on them, flesh grew, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, say to it, this is what the Lord God says, breathe, 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 or his breath. Come from the four winds and breathe into these slain so that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole, are the whole house of Israel. Look how they say our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Lord God says, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them, my people, and lead you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am the Lord, my people, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle with you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it. This is the declaration of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we move forward into the, the book of Romans, uh, the letter to the Romans that Paul wrote, Life in the Spirit, chapter 8. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering. In order that, the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, because the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his Spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we may be sitting in our homes or wherever we're watching this, uh, this YouTube, um, participating in the life of the church in a, in a different sort of way. Uh, whether we stand or whether we are seated, we can stand because of Jesus and his redemption for us. Uh, what he accomplished for us, it allows us to stand before God, our maker. Here from John's Gospel, chapter 11, uh, we learn of Jesus in, as the res we learn of Jesus as the resurrection and the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, and it was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sisters sent a message to him, Lord, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, the sickness will not end in death, but it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. 
And after that, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. Rabbi, the disciples told him, just now the Jews tried to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Aren't there 12 hours? Aren't there 12 hours in a day? Jesus answered, anyone who walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But anyone who walks during the night, he does not, he does stumble because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm on my way to wake him up. Then the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will get well. Jesus, however, was speaking about his death, but they thought he was speaking about natural sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. I'm glad for you that I wasn't there so that you may believe, but let's go to him. Then Thomas called the twin and said to his fellow disciples, Let's go too so that we, can, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, less than two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said to Jesus, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. Having said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and calling for you. As soon as Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the, the house consoling her saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to cry there. As soon as Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her crying, and the Jews who had come out with her crying, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you put him, he asked. Lord, we told him, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. Some of them said, Couldn't he who opened the blind man's eyes also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, there is already a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of the so they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this, so that they may believe you sent me. And after he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, bound at hand and foot, with linen strips, and with his face wrapped in a cloth, Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he, saw what he did believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now make a confession of our faith using this creedal hymn, Great God, Our Creator. <laughs>
our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What is there to say in an, in an introduction amidst the times that we are facing? Some days are easier than others. Some days we're able to make sense of having a plan, having an idea of what's going to unfold, and we, we watch the news, hear the radio, watch, or read the internet, whatever it is, and, and just like that, our perspective changes. The unknown is out there. What's going to happen? How big of a deal is this? And our concerns often are based upon our family, our own resources, our own assets. Our concerns for the economy, our concerns over so many things. Will I have a job? What will that job be like when I get back to it? What's going to be different when this is all over? So many questions, so many unknowns. Today I'd like you to think about Ezekiel. I'd like you to just go to the Valley of Dry Bones, the Boneyard. In a sense, your home has maybe begun to feel like a boneyard at this point. It's amazing how much cleaning you have to do when you are home all the time. When your kids are home all the time, so much has changed. We're learning technology faster than ever. How to communicate as a congregation, how to communicate with others. We're learning how to keep our distance from one another. So much going on, that it can feel like a boneyard. Ezekiel was a prophet. He was asked by God to speak words for God to a people that were pretty hopeless. And when I say hopeless, they were without hope. There's a good reality that there's been moments and there will be moments to come when, based on what happens or could happen or might happen, causes us to lose hope in understanding what the future is going to look like. But there is one thing. There is one being, God, who we do not have to even come close to losing hope in. Unlike our hope of whether it's going to rain or shine, the hope of pandemic to come to a close sooner than later, the hope of just not knowing, the, the hope of just come what we want to happen, but maybe it's likely that it won't happen. There is a different sort of hope, and that's the hope that comes through faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ezekiel was given the task to speak to the people of what he saw, and he saw a valley of bones. And he was told by God that, you know, these bones will come alive. And you have to imagine that Ezekiel is kind of thinking what we would be thinking. Really, God? How? But he did as God commanded. He said, speak to these bones. Tell them to come to life. And so he began to speak. And what happened? There was a rattling sound. And bones began to connect to bones. And oh, what a, what a sight it must have been. Sinew, muscle tissue, then skin. And then Ezekiel says, but there was something missing. Yeah, what was missing? It was breath, life. And God has an answer for that. The God of hope has an answer for that. He says, Ezekiel, breathe. Breathe into these bodies, these bones, the sinew, this flesh. Breathe into these bodies, this body. that were in the boneyard, dry as ever, were now alive in this vision of Ezekiel. It's a vision that uh, Ezekiel shared with those people of Israel who had been exiled. It was a vision to give them hope as to how God was going to work through the unimaginable. Think about it. A year ago, what we are going through now the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, pandemic. A year ago, 99.9% .9 of us would have 
never imagined what was happening here. And so it was during the time of Ezekiel. 99.9% of Israelites could never have imagined that God would work through a the foreign power that exiled them, that kicked them out of the land, that God would work through them to invite them back, and not only that, help them fund the rebuilding project for Israel, for the temple in Jerusalem. And so, with great confident hope, we don't know what the Lord has in store. But in this text from Ezekiel, we know that God is capable of anything, and most anything that is beyond our and we know that he speaks. And when he speaks, things happen. All the way back to the beginning, in the creation of the world, when God spoke life into all this earth that we know. From the land, to the water, to the birds, to the animals, the sky, the stars. God spoke and they appeared. And then, the first humans. He spoke life. And he gave instruction. And we know how those instructions went, and we know that sin entered the world, and ever since then, the thing called death and sin has been a problem. And death and sin have been a problem because of the work of the devil, continuing to just uh, maximize the efforts or the, 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 the damage that can be done by all these things. But God speaks. There in creation, there amidst Adam and Eve, and he promises a savior. So these Israelites that Ezekiel is speaking to, well, they are to hear that Israel will be restored. And as we hear, we know that we are restored through the one Israel, Jesus Christ himself. And it is in him as we go into this week of uh, you know, preparation going forward to, to Holy Week. It is here. hope and confidence and we're able to see the unimaginable and we see the restoration and not of a, of a people of, of Jerusalem but we see the restoration of the body and those bodies that we uh, live in are those bodies that are also under the threats of a pandemic, under the threats of a virus. We know some bodies will uh, be affected different than other bodies we have a plan in store. Our, our government, the kingdom uh, of government, is helping uh, us, protecting us, so that they can uh, further protect us down the road. We have to trust in them. We have to work with them. We have to also pray for the unimaginable. We have to pray for the miracle that this would all be done with. We have to pray for the abilities of human beings that God has created to do good in this world, to find that cure, to find that vaccine that we need. You see, we can pray for all these things. They are somewhat unimaginable. But if there is one who is capable of the unimaginable, it's God, through Jesus Christ, who does the unimaginable for us, who are in the boneyard, in our homes, struggling, at times full of fear, times overconfident thinking that we can power through all this and it won't touch us but through the boneyard God gives us life through his son Jesus Christ so that whether we face death one day to come soon or later we need not fear and in the midst of the days up until that point from the boneyard of the life that we live the reminders of our brokenness, the reminders of our uh, short-sightedness, the reminders of our sin. God continues to give life to these bones, to your bones, to your sinew, to your flesh, to your heart, to your mind. To give you confidence in a hope that is unlike any other hope found in this world. And that this hope may not be something that we keep to ourselves, but it is a confident hope that we share with our neighbor, who may not know the whole story yet, 
You might be given that task. In fact, you are given that task. To share this confident hope that we have in Christ Jesus, this spirit that dwells in us, to share that spirit and to trust in that word from God that never come back, comes back empty. But it always does what it accomplishes and what it says it is to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now we sing our next hymn, the sermon hymn, My Song is Love Unknown. service when I invite the children up for a children's message and uh, so here you go I want to make a cake and uh, I'm going to use Barb Barnhart's pan because she left it at church and I know she's not here and uh, this is just a reminder for her to pick up her cake pan but thank you for your cake pan because I get to use it right now so I'm thinking I'm going to make a cake I'd really like to make a good cake in fact we had chocolate cake a couple days ago and uh you know, as our kids get older, the cake doesn't last as long. It used to last a week, and now how about two and a half days, and the cake is gone. So I'm going to make a cake. That's going to be a really good cake. I really like chocolate cake. And so this is going to be one of those really delicious chocolate cakes. And all i got to do is make the cake. Cake, be made. Well, I thought it would. I thought it would be that easy. Obviously, uh, I was wrong. Obviously, you know I'm up to something. <laughs> I'm up to making a point. Why is there no cake? Well, the reality is I'm not God. I can't do that. I can't miraculously make things appear. But I know someone who can. And I know someone who does. And he doesn't make cake, but he gives faith. He makes faith for you and I to trust in him. He makes uh, this beautiful cake for us to trust in his promises. Now, it's not cake. It's not what we eat. But in a sense, he does feed us. He feeds us with his word. And get this, his word, it does things. And so, in our gospel reading, Lazarus had been dead for four days and... 
And we know what happens to dead animals when they are dead for four days around the yard on a, a hot summer August. They start to smell. Well, Lazarus started to smell too. And, you know, everyone just said, well, you know, they threw in the towel. It's over. There's you know, the uh, AED machine, CPR. It's beyond any of that. Doctors, if they existed, wouldn't be able to do anything with the four-day-old uh, dead body. But Jesus, one of the cool things he did is he wept. He wept over the death and what it did to people and caused them to grief, grieve. But, but then he says, pull the, turn, pull the stone away. And that's when someone's like, it's going to smell. That doesn't stop Jesus. Bad smells, bad odors, whatever it may be. It doesn't stop Jesus. And he says in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And he came out. And life was given back to Lazarus, who was dead. God did something that you and I can't do. Some of us who are in the fields of medicine can do this at life's end. And we can take care of our bodies during life's ongoingness here on this earth. But when a body's been dead four days, there's only one thing that can bring that body back to life, and that's Jesus. And that's what he does for Lazarus. It's the same word that Ezekiel shared years prior, when bones rattled against each other and came back to life. God spoke through the prophet Ezekiel. God's word has the power to do these things. In holy baptism, God's word had the power, has the power, ongoing power, to make you a part of his family, to give you that assurance that you need. And each time we gather, whether it be here or on YouTube or the scriptures are open and we are together as a family doing devotions, God is speaking his word. And he's doing things. And he's allowing our faith to continue to grow in ways that science can't really explain. We live by faith and not by sight. So boys and girls, uh, I sure am hungry for cake. I bet you are too. Maybe you can have some later. Uh, maybe you'd like to make your pastor a cake when this whole pandemic thing is uh, good and done with. Uh, Barb, remember to come get your cake pan. But in the midst of all these things, God and his word is more powerful and more uh, hope-filled than anything else that we know. And we're a part of God. We are connected to him through faith in Jesus Christ. As you guys go back uh, to school tomorrow, and most of you online school, it's going to be different. Parents are going to want you to be structured and try to, to work with parents and, and make sense of how we're going to do this. Teachers are the same way. And so we pray that God will work us as we take care of our teachers and our teachers take care of us and we take care of our parents and our parents take care of us. We're in this together and we have this great expectant hope in Jesus Christ as we continue to walk towards Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and then Easter. <laughs>
the might of your word to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic. And teach us to be patient. Teach us to be faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely and those who are over and above us, doing what they ask of us for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Lenten season soon transitions into Holy Week, help us continue to recognize our sin, our need for repentance, and our dependence on our Savior. Help us to learn from Paul's letter to the Romans and to continually put the death Put to death those things of the flesh that lead us astray, that we may be fed and led by your life-giving Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those who mourn and, and, we, and carry grief and sorrow in the loss of loved ones, whether it's been recent or months or even years. Grief continues for many people. Help us learn from our Savior at, at, at Lazarus' tomb that death is not the last word of this life, that we rejoice in your promises made fulfilled and yet to come of the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Enable and equip us to be heralds of the hope that is ours and witness to Christ and the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire and bless all called to preach your word and administer your holy sacraments even during these difficult times with resurrection power that they do not grow weary, but grow in compassion and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sake of your word, by which you cause repentance and faith to issue from human hearts, uh, and faith to issue from human hearts, guide the leaders and nations and communities of our world, pursue ways of peace and tranquility amongst people during these difficult times, that your word be preached in the salvation, uh, for the salvation of all. Lord, in your mercy, Comfort and heal all those who are sick and infirm, disabled and troubled, especially Becky Kreider, Anita Steffen, Walter Lachman, Joan Casperson, Marlis Benzie, and Barb Malin. Breathe your life-giving spirit. Continue to breathe your life-giving spirit into all in need, that hope and comfort and peace in you may be theirs. Remind us that our ultimate healing is in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And together we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, a beautiful hymn, Abide With Me. Let's sing together, Abide With Me.
Minnesota, and our organist uh, this morning or at this time is Mary Lynn Collins, and so we thank you for her time that she put forth to prepare the music uh, here uh, on this uh, recording. Uh, as you can see, our giving uh, went down a lot last week because we didn't publicly worship, and so just a reminder uh, for you, if you have an offering to give, we would um, really appreciate you getting that in the mail and sending it to Trinity. Not many numbers for attendance anywhere because we did not attend. I, I had a number of hits on YouTube, though. We had a, like 300 on one and 100 on another. And uh, so uh, that, that was pretty neat to see you guys show up. And uh, uh, we'll continue to learn and grow. I know sound on YouTube for last Wednesday was, was not very good. And so we, I think we got that figured out for this Wednesday. I right, we want to keep these folks in our prayers. Pray for them that they are just dealing with different things and we want uh, uh, recovery and strength given to them. And we also lift up all those people, those families that are connected to people that are uh, dealing with the coronavirus. Um, I guess this was from last week, but you know, the church is closed. Um, and this is an update here that worship services are canceled not only uh, through uh, April 4th, but uh, we're up until Good Friday that we will not be worshiping publicly. So we have some wiggle room at this point with Easter, maybe doing something different there. But that could all change based on what we're learning as uh, we learn how the pandemic is uh, taking its part uh, in Minnesota. Um, again, some words about stewardship and offering. And then the broadcast for Lenten service will be Wednesday at 8 again. Uh, you'll be able to find that on YouTube as well. Um, more information about Thrive at Choice Style of Action Team Projects. Just want to let you know that... Uh, Confirmation Sunday is postponed. Uh, I think everyone that needs to know has been made aware of that, and uh, it's kind of what we all knew. But really, we're just waiting, uh, waiting to figure out what it takes to, to get going again after uh, two weeks of staying home. But pray that this finds you well. If you have any needs, don't hesitate to call an elder, call myself, call the church. Uh, we would love to connect with you. An e email uh, was sent out on Thursday, and we hope that you received that. Uh, but you are probably right that you don't have an email, and so you would have not even been able to get it. But we also, if you didn't get an email and you have email, we may have an old email address. And so 
If you would send a, an email to office at trinitylp.com, O-F-F-I-C-E, at trinitylp, trinity, all lowercase, lp.com, uh, to update your email, we can be better communicators with you uh, at this time. We also know that you know some people that don't have email, don't have internet, and so uh, in this email are some resources for them. Uh, but if you can uh, help communicate with them what you're learning through YouTube and, and what you're hearing, uh, that would be very much appreciated as we are the body of Christ caring for one another uh, in this really strange and difficult time. We do continue to pray for a miracle, that this would all just go away. There's nothing wrong in praying for a miracle, but we also pray you know, for doctors and researchers and people that are, understand viruses best may come up with a vaccine. Uh, we, we hope for that. We hope with kind of, we'd really like it to happen. We're not sure if it will, either one of those. But one thing we hope in that we don't have to wonder about is that who we have been made in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so I leave you with that thought and pray that this was a blessing to you and look forward to connecting with you too, probably online. Let's see, Wednesday and then uh, Palm Sunday, uh, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter. Easter might give us some opportunity to do a few other things, but we have to just kind of wait it out and see. Lord be with you.